Hi, and welcome everybody to uh, Watercolor Blob Monsters. And today we're going to be focusing on some of these art elements of shape, value, and texture. Now we know that shape has two different, uh, two different families, essentially. There is the geometric family, where if you divide these in half, they're symmetrical, same on both sides. The other family is called the organic family. Organic is if you divide the shape in half directly in the middle, it will be asymmetrical or not the same on both sides. So here's how we start out. We start out with a beautiful sheet of kind of white paper. Thicker is better if you've got it. And then we start to, let's start to add some color. Now, watercolor sets, a couple things. I tend to stray, stray away. Whatever you have at home is great, right? But here at school, we've got some some larger pans. Now, if you notice also that some of them get a little bit dirty over time, don't fret. Just grab like a little wet paper towel and you can start to kind of clean out. That just happens, right? When we start to um, mix our colors and don't wash out brushes. So make sure that you're always washing out your brush before you get to another color. Okay, so I'll just wash that out. I'm gonna go ahead and start to I want to do some orange. I'm in an orange kind of a mood. Okay, so you can have your or your paper in the orientation of this is called the landscape view or the portrait view up and down. It's totally up to you. I'm going to have mine in the landscape view. So you can see more of my paper. Okay, so my goal is to have a, at least 10 shapes to have a variety of organic and geometric shapes. Now you'll notice when I start to add pure pigment, the pure watercolor on there, it it's really, really dark. If I add a lot of water, then the color is lighter. That's the art element of value. Value is the range of light to dark within a color or within a piece too. Okay. So I'm gonna try to get just a variety of a few and turn this one into kind of a bean. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm trying to make a variety much as variety as possible if I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And some larger, some smaller. And then 10. Okay, now this will take about one to two minutes or so to dry, depending on how much water you put on there. Now, as this is drying, Again, this one is inspired, this project is inspired by the work of Mike Lowry, who is a children's book author and illustrator. Um, within this Blob Monster painting that we're doing, we're learning about shape, the two different families of shape, we're learning about value, lights and darks, but we're also gonna focus on this idea of texture. Now texture, there's real texture and there's implied texture. Real texture is the texture that we feel all around us on real objects, real things in our everyday life. Implied texture is how lines can be used to show a certain kind of a texture. So it could be furry or really, really furry. It could be spiky, scaly, coarse, okay, smooth. Like what are the kinds of textures that you might be able to show with lines to imply a certain kind of a texture? So through the magic of space and time, I'm going to go ahead and bring up what I've been working on. So this one I worked on earlier. This one is dried. And we're going to use a thin black Sharpie marker now. So we've got a variety of shape. We've got a range of value. And now we're going to start to add that texture. So let's check this out. I started to outline my objects. I started to put like a contour line on the outside. And now what I'm going to start to do because I, it's all about the details when you're doing this kind of a drawing. I'm going to go ahead and start to outline this guy 
but I also want to be able to show texture. So I'm just going to start to put small little lines. And so what used to be a flat area, a flat shape, is now starting to have a little bit more dimension. It's starting to look a little bit more visually interesting because of the texture that I've got on here. Okay, so because these are blob monsters, the goal is that we're going to kind of stick with this idea of monsters. So how might you take something in your everyday life, some sort of a creature, and then turn it into a monster? So I did it with a larger kind of a blob here. Let me show you. I did it with a dog, but a dog with multiple feet. This one is a very tired looking, kind of a bee, but a bird. This one, I'm going to start to add a few more wing, probably wings to this one. So again, have fun. I did a sleeping pickle. Gosh, this is kind of a cool one, a sleeping pickle. I did another blob who was reading on his way to a birthday party, roller skating to a birthday party. Here's that one, ooh, but with hairy arms. I had kind of a fish creature howling at a moon. So again, have fun as you do this. We're, we just start with the, with the watercolor um, and you'll get to create your own set of 10 um, blob monsters. Okay. Enjoy.